so uh, hello. Thank you for coming to this presentation. My name is Nikola Klinkachev, and I'm engineer from the Power CLI engineering team. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how we give you access to the latest APIs and API features. Um, so a standard disclaimer, this is a tech preview. Um, so don't go make any financial decisions or sign any contracts because of the information in this presentation. Uh, that being said, the features are not new. They have been in Power CLI for some time, uh, but they're subject to change. So before I start, uh, oh, can I ask you a few questions? So who has used Power CLI? And good, good, every, it seems like everyone. And who has used the vSphere views? or knows what they are? Sorry? Get view, yeah, get view. All right, so most of you will be familiar with um, some of the features here. Um, all right, so this is the agenda. I'll quickly go over what Power CLI for the benefit of uh, maybe someone watching it after VMworld Online. Um, so Power CLI. It's a command line interface tool. It's based on Microsoft's PowerShell. Uh, runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac. And it's, it focuses on two areas. This is the high-level commandlets, which we can think of as user scenarios, like uh, MoveVM, set cluster, stuff like that. And the low-level bindings, which are um, mappings, one-to-one -one mappings to the actual APIs. So the first area might be a few API calls that are hidden to you. And the second one is just one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, my presentation focuses on the second low-level bindings. So I'm going to be talking today about the dynamic bindings. This is our newer approach to exposing the APIs. So imagine this, uh, this is a V product, is some of the, our supported products for uh, Power CLI. And this is a timeline. So it's, uh, it starts, it's developed, and it's released. And the uh, blue line is when you install it in your environment. Um, so in what we've historically done is the static bindings, which are on the top. These are the get view for vSphere as well as some other products. So what we do usually do is we take the API description, which describes what the server does on the API side. And that's where the two diverge. So the server is, implements this API and provides it. And we get the description. From this description, we generate some C-sharp code. Then we build it. And we have to package it and release it so you can get it and have the latest views. So when you deploy, you have to upgrade PowerCLI to get the views for the new API. And then you can connect and start scripting. And this, is, this has some advantages and disadvantages. So it's great for writing the high-level commandlets so we can see at build time if something has maybe regressed or some other features that we can use. But it requires you to update PowerCLI and requires us to release the PowerCLI so you can get the features. So what we've done uh, recently is um, develop dynamic bindings. So this is the bottom scenario. Uh, we take the API description um, when you connect to the server. So. The, the process is similar, but it happens when you connect to the server. And they are dynamically built with uh, the meta, meta, metadata from the server. So uh, you can use them without having to upgrade Power CLI. So we again start with this API description, but it happens uh, when you connect to the server. We generate. Um, CLI metadata from the metadata from the server, and we package the views runtime. Uh, so what the, this allows us and allows you to do is uh, run the newer features with the version of Power CLI that you already have. Um, 
and this has a couple of advantages. You don't need to upgrade PowerCLI, as I said. New API features are available as soon as you deploy the product and have the module. But assuming you are using vSphere, you probably already have the module for this PowerCLI uh, product supported server. And when you connect and get the metadata from the server, it shows you only what's available and relevant to your particular environment. So if anything, uh, if you're running an older version, it won't tell you, show you new features. And if you're on a newer environment, it will show you maybe an improved uh, feature. Uh, I'll take a few minutes just to take a few questions, if you have any, before we continue. All right. So this is a bit, a, a bit what happens behind the scenes in PowerCLI. Uh, this is, on the left, is the metadata we get from the server. Uh, it contains uh, the type description, so this would be types that you have in the API. You have uh, operation descriptions, which describe uh, operation names, parameters, return types, um, stuff like that. You have uh, service descriptions. So the services are just a package of closely related operations. So the, if it's a REST API, it would maybe be the, all of the REST methods for this resource. And we have a human readable help that we package with the views as well. So we get this from the server and we do some parsing and static analysis on it. Um, so this would be if you have a type that has inherit it, ha it has inheritors, we parse this so we know what you can use if you have a base type. Uh, we do some other stuff just to help us optimize performance as well. Uh, and we, the, there's a couple other components, but we have the metadata manager. This is probably the most important one that's driving all of the stuff. Uh, and from this CLI metadata, we extract the rest or soap mappings depending on what the API is. So we can use them. And after that, when we have this uh, metadata, we build the bindings. So in the static, in the get view, this would be the views. In the dynamic bindings, this would be the service objects. And the service object, it has a name, documentation that you can use, methods uh, that you can code. These would be the operations of the API and the help object that has the human readable data and allows you to instantiate parameters. So this is the abstract part. I'll start with the demos now, just to so show you the features. Um, so the, the, the text here in the screenshots, this is for reference. I have a demo, live demo. Uh, if you can't see, I'll show you the live demo. It's exactly the same thing that's on the text here. This is just for reference later, if you want. So the way you access the API is um, called the get service commandlet. We have currently four supported products. This would be the NSXT, the REST uh, API of vSphere, a, uh, HCX, and uh, VMware Cloud on AWS. Each of them has a module, and each, each of those modules has get service commandlet. So uh, for example, for NSXT, it would be get NSXT service. Um, the demo here, sh I'll show you how you can create a network segment in uh, SDDC in VMware Cloud on AWS today. Um, so a couple of things. You can get service would get all of the services. You can filter by name. Uh, this would, and you can pass wildcards. And if you get call get service with a specific service name, it will give you just the service. So let me see if I can put up the demo. Um, so can anyone see the text on the demo? OK, so here. Uh, this script, con the connect script, it just has some uh, connect info. Uh, and I've hidden it, so I don't show the whole internet my credentials. Uh, but it's, it does only connect with your refresh token you get from the UI. And this is your access token to the API. And the org ID and SDDC ID you can get either from the a a UI or the, API, the VMC API. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code for this demo. 
there's no reason you can't use any other IDE to develop and run PowerShell and Power CLI. It's just, I just like this. It's per personal preference. Ooh, sorry. The Adventures of Live Demos. Um, OK, so I'll just run through it with the debugger step by step to see what's going on. So we've, uh, co we've called the connect commandlet. And you can see I'm logged in as my user. Um, oh, step one step. So in this step, it's, uh, the Power CLI is downloading data from the server. CLI metadata is building all the objects. It takes a while, the first call, because there's a lot of metadata, a lot of services. Uh, but all this is cached, so each subsequent call doesn't do any of this, doesn't go to the server. It just uh, uses the cache, and it's a lot faster. So this will probably take about a minute with the VPN and the Wi-Fi here. Oh, there, there we go. Um, OK, so this is how the output looks. These are all the services we have. And there's a name. And uh, if the API provides a user-readable documentation, you would have it on the right side. Uh, and you can see it. I think currently only the vSphere REST API provides service-level human-readable documentation. So we want to create a segment. We we'll filter by segment. Uh, these are our relevant services. And I happen to know I need the segments. So what I'm doing here is just getting the service, assigning it to a variable so I can use it later. So how we have the service. Now how do we see the built-in help? For this, we've created the help object. And if you want to see a service level help, you just do service.help. This will give you methods and documentation about them. Uh, if you want to see a specific operation, you just do dot the name of the operation. In the demo, this will be dot updates. And if you want to see a help for a parameter of that operation, you just append dot parameter. Uh, let me go back to the demo. So, service help. So, again, no readable documentation on the service level, but for each operation, you can see this is the return type, and you have the documentation on the bottom. If there's any constants you can uh, pass to the service, they will be shown on the bottom as well. Um, so we need the update operation for this demo. We just do service help update. And it gives you everything you have to know about the operation. Uh, it gives you the return type, errors that might be uh, thrown, the, the definition, and the parameters. So there's only one interesting parameter here. This is the segment parameter. It's a complex object. It's not a, just a string. Uh, and we can see this object's fields per, and anything you need to know about it. OK, so now we know what we need to pass to this operation. How do we instantiate it? and? call the operation. So there's a couple of ways you can create uh, complex objects. If it's just a string or an int, you can pass it directly. If it's a complex object, there's a couple of ways. So if you know the body of the request you want to make, and I found this useful if you have the HTTP request and you need to make a quick test of something, you can just uh, get the JSON string, for example or XML and do use the PowerShell inbuilt commandlet convert from, in this case, JSON, and create the, the object from there. It will create a P 
GPS object, you can pass that. Um, if you know what the object looks, but you don't have the JSON string, it would be useful to create a hash table or a PS object, um, and you can pass that. Or we've, we've provided a create method in the help, which will create a placeholder for your parameters. So this will create an object with some information I'll show you in a second. Uh, it will show you all the fields. You can uh, assign variables to it. And when you send it to the server, it will only send the fields that you've modified. So none of the default values uh, that you haven't changed will be sent. So for the segment, uh, we just do uh, dot create, and it will create our object. So this is how it looks. Uh, these are all the fields. Uh, you can see here it says unset. Uh, this means this is a default value. And it won't be sent to the server if you do the request with this object. Uh, if, it's, uh, if there are any required fields of this object, it would, set, it would say unset required. And you know you, can, you have to complete this in order to make a valid request. It also tells you the type, so you know what you have to provide there. Um, so here we set some of the fields. Um, here in this line, I'm creating. Um, so subnets is a field of the segment. It's a list of uh, strings, and here I'm creating. Uh, sorry, it's a list of complex objects, and here I'm creating an element of this list and adding it to the list. The default value would be an empty list. So it's ready for you to populate with elements. So this is how you can create complex objects that are deeper in the tree. So now that we've completed, we've passed some fields, we can see here in the segment object that the things we've set are no longer marked as unset. So this will actually be sent to the server. Um, so what this does is provide you with an idea what, of what you can use, what uh, fields are there. But when you actually want to do the request, you don't have to filter out stuff that the API wouldn't uh, as accept as input. So now that we have our uh, parameter, we can call the update operation. So no surprises there. We just invoke the method with the parameters. And we can see here that our object, in this case network segment, is returned with all of the fields and information about it. So there's one specific type of object I wanted to talk to you about. This is the dynamic structure. Uh, its type would be, be shown as a dynamic structure uh, string in the UI and in the PowerShell console, sorry. And this has a few, uh, two use cases. So this uh, can be any object. So this is basically, you can put, put any object there. Uh, so this may be, you have an API that supports a config that doesn't have any specific structure. This would be a use case for it. And you can pass a hash table or a PowerShell object and PowerCLI would serialize it as a JSON or XML, depending what the API is. And the second thing for this uh, dynamic structure type is when you have uh, inheritor types. So this would, when you see it, it basically means this is a base type. You have to instantiate one of the uh, inheritor types. So this, this was my demo. These were the basic features. Uh, if you want to read more, uh, I'll give you a couple of links. Um, so this is, on the top is the PowerShell, PowerCLI sort of homepage uh, in the code community. Um, we've released PowerShell 11.5. Uh, so this on the top would be 11.5, not 11.4. This would be the latest PowerCLI. Um, 
The second link is our communities forum. Uh, the third one is our Power CLI blog, which uh, where Kyle Rudy has excellent uh, blog posts on everything Power CLI. And if you have any ideas, questions, suggestions, uh, please go and to the Power CLI ideas website, and you can vote for ideas. We our project manager goes there, uh, updates them from time to time, but definitely looks at them to let us know what to focus on. So thank you for being here. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll gladly answer them. Thank you.